Oh, and welcome to the LaSalle Public Library virtual programming. I'm Donna from the library, and tonight's program is Keepsake Winter Centerpieces uh, with Natalie Martin from the University of Illinois Extension Office. We'll be getting to Natalie's program in just a minute, but I wanted to uh, make a few announcements. We have the two programs that are on your screen coming up, Winter Bird Watching on December 8th. And I want to put in a little note here for all our bird watchers. Um, we have been told that there are still sightings of migratory um, hummingbirds in Illinois. And if you could uh, keep your feeders up a little bit longer, that's that's the plea from the bird watchers. Um, secondly, I hope you can attend Lisa's program. There's always great birding tips on her programs. Coming up on a Saturday program, generally our programs are on Tuesdays, but coming up on a Saturday program, for those of you who have seen Leslie Goddard in person here at the library, she will be doing a virtual lecture on the history of the Betty Crocker cookbook. So I hope you can join us on that Saturday, the 19th at two o'clock. Additionally, um, if you would want to get in the holiday spirit, you can watch our Facebook page. In the next week, I am hoping we will have on there uh, two things, some really easy uh, holiday crafts for kids with things that you probably have around the house and our um, un-gingerbread house tutorial. We are um, doing this for families who aren't purists and don't care that they're not using gingerbread. We will be uh, having all the good parts where you just have family fun. So watch for our gingerbread un-gingerbread tutorials and the upcoming Kid Crafts on Facebook. And finally, not to be missed, if you have children, we are doing a holiday gift book giveaway, weather permitting on Saturday, December 12th, from 10 until one o'clock. All kids are invited to come with their families. We'll have volunteers and hope that everyone uh, who comes will have their masks on and we will practice social distancing. We're gonna make this move along really quick to keep it safe and um, not have to worry about the winter weather. So we hope you'll join us that day and mark your calendar for December 12th. So without waiting any longer for more holiday ideas, I'm now going to turn the program over. We're gonna stop sharing our screen. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Natalie Martin. I, uh, I wanted to, to point out that uh, we have a number of librarians uh, signed up for this program tonight and please feel free to use anything you see tonight in your program and call your extension office for more ideas. And so with that, Natalie, are you there? Natalie? I'm here, sorry. I switched my screen and then I couldn't unmute. So here I am. Guys, I've done this before. Don't let this discourage you. Um, <laughs> As always, Donna knows to just go with the flow because who knows what I'm going to probably do. But welcome. That's right. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I have a couple quick um, just housekeeping notes. Um, and then you'll have to stare at my face through a lot of this because I, I have a lot of things to show you guys about different centerpieces. But um, just a little some notes about the, the outreach that we do through here for the um, Illinois Extension. It's, uh, this is the flagship outreach effort of the United, um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and we offer programs in all of Illinois' 102 counties. So if you are a librarian in another county, um, your extension I guarantee it has great programs. Um, hopefully like this one, we haven't decided if this one's great yet. You can let Donna know afterwards. Um, two of the ones that may be of interest to you guys would be the Master Gardener Program, which is what I am part of. Um, and then the Master Naturalist Program, uh, which Lisa Sons, who's doing the birding program is, is a member of. And uh, really the two differences is that the Master Gardener Program is gonna be about um, growing things. <laughs> On yourself. Uh, and that's going to be, you know, things you can grow in your yard, foods, uh, other kinds of plants, things like that, trees, and how to maintain those items. Even things like grasses. We do programs on grasses all the time. 
Um, and then the Master Naturalist program would be anything in the natural-based world um, and science-based education opportunities. Um, if you want to know more, I can definitely get you these links, um, or these links are all just searchable. Um, if you're interested in programs, you can um, Google your county. This one would be the LaSalle County uh, University of Illinois Extension. If you just Google LaSalle County Extension, this should come up, or whatever your county is. Um, and then Master Gardener programs by county are also Googleable very easily. And then down at the bottom is uh, the Bureau LaSalle, Marshall, and Putnam uh, webpage. We all share that one. Uh, Meg Overacker, who um, is not here tonight, she normally would be doing the spiel, but I'm hoping to get all the information correct. Uh, she's our program coordinator, and she uh, is based out of Ottawa, and she's going to be the person that you would contact if you're in LaSalle County and, and want a program or have a Master Gardener question. Um, we, do, we, do, we do a lot of um, troubleshooting for people if they have a garden problem and they want to look into. Um, so definitely you can reach out to Meg at, at these numbers and her email right there. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to stop my sharing and I'm going to turn on my face so you can see what I look like. Um, hello, I'm Natalie. I am the um, one of the master gardeners here in LaSalle County. I'm getting a lot of light on my face, so I apologize for that. Um, but I do a variety of different programs. So you might have seen me in June or September. I can't remember how the ones we did, what winter garden prep, stuff like that. So um, I've done a few programs on this Zoom platform for us, but this is a whole new experience for me because we're gonna be doing kind of a demonstration tonight. And if you have a question, I'm gonna kind of be paying attention. There's a raise your hand button um, that I'm not sure where it's gonna be at on your screen, but, or you can type something in the chat, uh, or you can um, just wait till the end and Donna will open the floor for questions. But if you have something pressing, um, then you can definitely interject. I, this is gonna be very casual, very casual. You can see I set up in front of our Christmas village. My daughter set it up for me um, to kind of get us in the holiday spirit, but we're gonna be doing some um, centerpiece arranging with some live evergreens. In this chat, I put the, um, I'm gonna, I'm just typed in right now, some good evergreens for cutting. Um, I've got a couple different types. I'll kind of pull them up for you so that you can see them a little better um, that I have here that we have cut. And so when you are cutting evergreens, you know, the number one problem with evergreens is that they're gonna drop needles. It's gonna make a big mess. You know, that's people's number one complaint. And the reason that they're dropping needles is that they're drying out. When any, if you think about a, a natural deciduous tree, a, a tree that loses its leaves, when it starts to dry out, it doesn't have enough resources. It's gonna drop those leaves to conserve those resources for the trunk and growing and things like that. An evergreen is gonna be the same. Now it is adapted over time to kind of maintain in different te temperatures and hold on to its leaves. But um, if it does lose water, it does dry out, it will drop its leaves. So. Keep that in mind, and I have some tips for you, but I've got a white, uh, I think this is a white pine. It's a pine, anyway, can't really count it. And I, it's like four, but you, these long um, needled ones are gonna be your pines. There are some shorter ones um, that are also pines, but and if you ever need help identifying, you can reach out to the Master Gardeners, but you can also just Google it. Google is probably faster than us, I'm not gonna lie to you. But um, any, if you're wondering about whether an evergreen is going to be a good cutting evergreen. You can always just think of what your um, Christmas tree types are. So things like scotch pines, white pines, things like that that you see as Christmas trees, those are going to be great cutting evergreens. Uh, balsam firs, Fraser firs, noble fir, white fir, Douglas fir. Douglas fir is a very popular Christmas tree. Um, those are going to be amazing for cutting and keeping as a wreath, as a centerpiece, things like that. They will hold up well to drying out. I do have some junipers here, and those would be like those um, shrubs or trees that have those blue berries. Um, and junipers, they'll smell really nice, but they will start to brown and not look as good fast. So if you're doing something short term, if you, well, I guess we're not really having parties, are we? But you're having, you want to make something for a weekend or a photo or something like that, um, it's perfect. Uh, evergreens do best and stay the longest from 30 degrees to 60 degrees. So if you think about that temperature, maybe this is, if you want something that's going to last longer, you might want to keep it outside. Um, 30 to 60, I mean, I don't know what you're keeping your thermostat at, but I'm keeping it higher than that, just saying. Um, 
So uh, keep that in mind. It will, the warmer it is in your house, the faster they will dry out, the faster that you will need to replace them. But if you have an evergreen tree or a shrub in your yard and you can continually kind of cut new ones and put them in a centerpiece, I mean, that would work really great. So um, what we're doing kind of today is arranging some stuff for a centerpiece using things we have in our house or keepsakes um, that you have in mind. I unfortunately had just like a crazy amount of stuff in my house. It was kind of horrifying once I actually started gathering things together. Um, so I was able to put together quite a few knickknacks. Um, I put together a couple just for us to look at right away and I'll kind of walk you through how I made those and then we'll make one together. Um, or two, we'll see. We'll see what time does, you know, we never know. I wanna make definitely one big one um, and one smaller one. So if you are of a smaller space or you wanna make one and give it as a gift and drop it on someone's front porch, great. Um, This one, you know, you might see that some of mine are a little extra, but my um, six-year-old daughter helped me make a lot of them. So like, we're very much the more is more, um, you know, strategy, but so um, this first one, I'm going to kind of hold it up at different angles so you can see it. Oh, and the lights, it has lights on it. I used some of those fairy lights. These ones are shaped like snowflakes. Can't find the power box, but I don't think it's going to show up very well. So um, this base that I have, I'm going to see if I can show you the, it's, it's the top, it's the lid to one of these hat boxes. So these, you know, you get them at like Hobby Lobby or Target or Walmart and they're for wrapping up gifts. So that this is the lid to that. Um, and I liked it because it was flat and short um, and I could kind of hold all my stuff in a central location. So I don't wanna move it around too much so that you can see it, but um, I got a little bit going on in here. I'm gonna point out some things. I've got a glass jar that's got some of my evergreens in it. Now, as of right now, I don't have any water or floral foam or anything. So this is going to be an example of a temporary one. You can mist like your wreaths and evergreens, but if you're on a centerpiece and it's going to be on your dining room table, it's going to have other things, you probably don't want to mist it. It's going to, it'll make everything just ruin. So this is a temporary one, but it does look nice. Um, so I've got some ornaments. Um, this is some plaid fabric that I had from doing top and canning jars. These are my um, snowflake lights. I have a little Santa hiding in here. Um, and then around back, I have a giant pine cone. I had found someone had given these pine cones to me as a gift. Um, and so I have, I just went around my house and kind of pulled some stuff together um, to see what I like. And then I just started arranging it. I'll kind of show you how I arranged everything and how I started out but I just kind of started to put some stuff in there and I took things back out. And um, so when you set it down, you can see this one's only about eight inches tall. Um, and that might be great for if you've got a centerpiece of a table um, or something like that. You've got uh, maybe on your coffee table, like right in the center of your room, um, there are toy trains on my coffee table. So no things like this are allowed on there. So, um, but maybe yours is different. So then I made, I have one that my daughter Ruby uh, made and I'll show you that one. This one's kind of more of a kitschy fun one. It's a little bit brighter. Um, so this, you can kind of see it. I've got some, I've got a Santa who's upside down um, and some like glittery. So this is definitely a little more bright. This is gonna be a little bit more, I don't, I don't wanna say gaudy cause I feel like that's got a negative connotation but whatever a nice word for gaudy might be that'll be what this is. Um, and this one I did a little bit differently. So this one has no um, natural evergreens in it, but you could easily, just because I, when I was putting things in, I just started to put them in. So if you don't have native or native, natural evergreens, fresh cut evergreens, use fake. It's all with what you got. But all this stuff was literally in my house. Like I said, it was a little horrifying. So um, when I, was trying to find vessels. So that's gonna be one of our first things we talk about is what size vessel you want. I was walking around and this one I knew I wanted it to be, sorry, I'm dismantling it as I talk. I wanted it to be, um, have no water. It wasn't gonna hold water. So this is actually an old um, brewery crate that I had. And I, and I, it looks fine even on its own. You know what I mean? If you had it, but because you can see inside of it, I kind of, 
didn't want you to see all the wires and sticks and stuff. So this is, if you've ever ordered a gift from Amazon or you receive a gift from Amazon, they gift wrap it in these bags. Um, and this is just a fabric bag. You could use swath of fabric, you could use wrapping paper, um, but this is just a fabric bag that I then kind of just nestled my brewery. I'm gonna try to angle my camera down here. I just kind of nestled my brewery crate. Sorry if you can see my Santa's workshop back here. Um, but so I just kind of pulled it up around and then I just slouched it. So I'd folded the top over and slouched it down. Um, so I'm just kind of tell you what kind of stuff this is. This is a headband that was my daughter's and it was, um, so you wear it on your head, but I thought it would look kind of fun to have like Santa upside down in here. Um, and this is an old ornament. Um, and then these were just left over from various different decorations and things like that. Um, so I just kind of stuck them in wherever to make them look good and then fill in space. Um, so you can kind of see, um, you really can um, make them just so out of just about anything. And like I said, you can kind of slow this down. It's not perfect. I ruined the nice um, thing that I had going on. Uh, there's one more that I will show you as an example, and that's the one that my daughter Ruby did. And again, she's very much a more is more attitude. Uh, so hers was big and bold. This is just an apple bucket, and she found every jingle bell that I had in my stash, and she put all of those on there. Um, she picked a big hat, a big pine cone. Uh, we made this today, and I'll show you how I made it. Um, a bow because it's Christmas, she told me, and then an ornament. So, um, you know, this is maybe not everything I would have chosen, but it's fun and it, um, it definitely fills the bucket. Um, and then as we, I'm going to take it apart a little bit to kind of show you. So one of the things that's kind of hard when you're arranging is, um, is, is kind of filling up your space, especially if you have a big space like this. So what her and I did was we had some leftover packing material and we just kind of crumpled it up because, sorry about all the noise, when you put something in here, when it doesn't have that, it just kind of falls in. And it's, sorry, lots of jingling. Um, and it just doesn't look as nice. So then when you put your packing material in, it kind of stands up nice and tall uh, and, and you're able to kind of fill it a little better without having to um, find a ton of stuff to fill in. I wouldn't want to have to fill in with ornaments at the bottom and use those valuable things. The other thing that I use a lot to um, fill my space, um, hold on one second, sorry, are, everybody has these and they are plastic grocery bags. So you can kind of shove those down in there. You can pick one or two and you can build up one area over the other. Um, so that's, these are a great tool, especially if you're not going to see the bottom. And if you can kind of see through the gaps, um, you can cover it in fabric on top before you put the other stuff in. Um, so that's a great, a great way to utilize it. Um, one of this tiny little thing that we made, um, I had, I found this like little gift bag. So this was just a gift bag that someone had given me a um, gift card in and I'll show you kind of what it looked like. You can kind of go around your house. Once you start looking, you'll find quite a bit. Um, but this was just a little uh, pull string gift bag and you could, I'll, I'll tell you what you can do with this in a second, but we put some stuff in there and tightened it. Um, and this was just a pair of elf feet. I don't know don't know why, um, and some fun little glittery florals, and we tied it, and then we tied it in a knot around back. Now, if you wanted to do something else fun with this, you could um, either leave a big enough knot in the back, um, or you could put a piece of ribbon and loop it around and use it to like hang on a doorknob as a little swag, or hang it on a door hanger in the center of your door. So there's lots of fun stuff that you can do uh, with this. And like I said, this was just a little gift bag that someone had given me. So that was a lot of fun. Before I start working on, um, we can take a quick, maybe a little break. If anybody has a question, um, they can put it in the chat. Um, but uh, we can, before I'm going to jump in and start maybe making an arrangement um, and we can see where it goes. And if you do have questions, you can just wait till the end then at that point. 
Uh, so I wanted to make two arrangements. I wanted to make a big centerpiece one that you could either put on your coffee table or your dining table. I'm gonna make myself a little room. It's gonna be similar to this one, um, but it's using a uh, platter that I had uh, in my basement. Now, I, when I was looking for different things to use, uh, I went around and I knew I wanted to make a wide one that was flat and I wanted uh, to make some taller ones. And when I am trying to decide what to use, I like, or when, I, when I'm trying to decide what I want it to look like, I want varied heights. So I want some tall stuff and some low stuff. You could potentially have a bunch of low things that you could see from all around. Um, and that was definitely a great option. Thanks, Kay Kayleen. I was horrified. Um, but uh, but yeah, so you can definitely do a bunch of lower things. I just think sometimes it's very hard to fill the space when you have a bunch of low, small things in one area. It more looks like your junk tray that you have, you know, that gathers all of your junk. You know, we don't want it to look like that. We want it to look intentional. Um, and and like you, you spent some time putting it together or that you just found a bunch of junk in your house and arranged it nicely on a tray, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, okay, so I found this platter and I chose this platter because I liked that it was on the outside, it was fairly neutral um, and I liked that it was low and it has this edge. This edge is gonna help me kind of contain all my stuff and keep it in and, and not have it spill over the edge so that we have this piece that we can pick up and move if you want it out of the way or not. It doesn't fall all over the place. So then I kind of looked around and I figured out what else I had. Now I had um, one of these uh, trees um, and I had a couple other, I had this empty uh, candle holder. So you've got some varied heights. I'm going to turn this down so you can see it a little better. Now I don't care at this pattern is on top of this platter and I don't necessarily want that super visible. Um, so I'm going to kind of start to, to put these things together. Now I do want to have um, some of my greens on this one. So I think I'm going to steal my, just for sake of time, I'm going to steal my greens from my other one. We want our uh, things to kind of be arranged out here. Guys, this is this is all off the cuff here. We're doing this uh, as we go. So, you know, we may have to make some changes. Just go with the flow. That's what we're doing tonight. Um, and then as we look around and kind of see what we've got, we did talk about keepsakes. And that's one of the great things that you can do with this, you know, when you find things around your house. Um, and one of the keepsakes that I wanted to put in was, um, this is a picture of my stepdad when he was uh, sitting on Santa's lap, I think he was maybe like two or three. Um, so I wanted to have that so that I could set it on my coffee table and look at it. So I'm gonna use that to hide my, my greens here. And this is gonna be, because it's, this one is a low centerpiece, it's probably gonna be visible from all angles. So we're gonna wanna keep that in mind. So this looks, I think, starting to look fairly nice on this side, but we wanna turn it around and um, also think about this back side. So I've got some purples, I've got some dark greens, I've got some dark reds. Um, so then we have to start thinking about what else we wanna put in there. I have this gold ribbon that I found and I have a lot of it. Um, so we've, we're gonna try to put some of this in there. And as we put it in, we don't wanna just wrap it in a circle. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. Wrap it in a circle. We don't wanna just put it here. We wanna kind of weave it in and out so that it kind of just looks a little um, more thought out, a little um, like we like we know what we're doing, even if we don't, you know what I mean? I'm a nervous talker, so I'm gonna try to fill this silence with a lot of words and I'm fighting that instinct right now, um, but I'm also trying to focus on what I'm doing here. So we're weaving this in here, we're going to try to fill in some of the space. Cause like I said, I don't necessarily want a ton of my pattern to be visible, um, but it's not because it's a black and white. It's not a huge, a huge deal if it is. All right. So we want to, I can't really see what I'm trying to see it on the camera. Getting this going here, got some golds. And then we want to try to fill in with our extra stuff. I did like this little 
Oh, I don't know if I, I think I'd shown you my giant pine cone. I'm gonna put another giant pine cone in here. And the nice thing about these giant pine cones is they're huge and they take up a lot of space. So it's a nice, easy peel and you can kind of work with the thing. And if it hangs over, I think that's all right. So that's gonna be, but you can see it's kind of a big thing. So we wanna weave in our, break it up a little bit, weave our ribbon around. And then and we can also um, fill in with some of our extra greens too, if we need to. And like I said, we don't, you have to think, keep in mind that your greens will break down over time and fade. Um, so keep that in mind when you're choosing your greens and choosing um, how you're gonna do your centerpiece. This uh, glass jar that these greens are in, I could add some water. Uh, to it and uh, keep them a little fresh because, but this one also looks like it might turn out to be um, able to be misted, which would be nice as well. And then I am going to, again, more is more. I'm gonna add some lights to this. I've got Santa hooked on my lights over here. How dare he? What do we got going on here? Looks like we're getting a whole bunch of stuff with these lights. Um, I made my husband untangle these lights. I had three sets and they were all, of course, wound together because I haven't looked at them since last year. Okay, I'm gonna show you my face for a second here. So we're starting to kind of get this going here. I think it's actually looking okay from that side. Um, it's kind of starting to look like a lot on this side, but maybe it'll all come together. So we've got our ribbon, tuck him in there. We got our ribbon and our greens and our other tree and that other tree might have to go. We'll have to see. And then I want to weave in these lights to kind of give it, these are fairy lights. So you want, if you are going to be putting this in a place that is not going to be near an outlet, you're going to want some of these. I'll show them to you. They're these battery pack lights. Um, these ones I got at Target on clearance at the end of the season. Um, they have so many, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them wherever, but you want to make sure that your battery pack is going to be in a spot that's easy to get to because otherwise there's no point in putting lights out if you're not going to be able to get to them. So I'm going to tuck that in right in the center. Camera back down. So I'm going to tuck mine in right in the center so I know exactly it's going to be right down in the middle. I can see it from the top so I don't even have to remove it. Headphones are tangled in this. Um, and then I'm going to start to move it around and we're going to use these lights as kind of just like a finishing touch. And I think I might put my Santa in there too, because he's kind of tangled up in all of this. So we're going to weave these. Oh, all these has the battery parts. All these is the best. Is there anyone here that doesn't like all these? I think you're in the wrong program if you are, because I am all these number one fan. Uh, probably half the things that, um, around this stuff came from all these at some point. So we're gonna get our uh, lights weaved in. And you wanna kinda hide, I mean, I don't mind too much if you see wires, at least for me, but um, you can kind of move those wires in so that it looks more like just snowflakes sitting there if you want to. Again, I'm not a perfectionist as I'm sure you can tell, but um, if you are more someone that is a little bit more detail oriented, um, I'm gonna see how this is kind of shaping up. So I actually don't think it's for a, for an on the spot thing here. Oh, really quick, one thing. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I will move it, hold it still. So you can kind of see it a little bit. I've got, this one's a little harder because it's um, a little tall on the one side, but I've got my tree. I've got my, my lights. Oh, that's a little cluster of lights. Oh, well. And then I've got my big pine cone. So you want, especially with a, a centerpiece like this, um, you want to have interest from all sides. And let me know if you need a better view of anything. And I can also take some pictures and send them to Donna. Um, so yeah, the centerpiece, someone, someone commented in the chat that they liked the photo centerpiece idea. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's nice that, um, especially for a Christmas like this, where, yes, I can turn on the lights, um, where we're maybe missing some of our family members a little bit. Uh, it's, it's nice to kind of include some touches like that and some memories when you're kind of, we have some of us are home uh, every day, 
every day um, with their kids. So it might be nice to put together some special projects like this. So I did turn the lights on. I'm gonna try to hold it. I don't know if you can see it. The lighting maybe leaves something to be desired here, but. And then you'll get my big cluster of snowflakes here, but bam. Uh, one thing I do want to encourage if you are going to do a um, cut green centerpiece, and I think Donna put this in the um, in the Facebook thing, um, that if you have cut greens or poinsettias or other things that you're bringing in from outside, if you do have pets, make sure that you look up these plants and these greens just to make sure that it's not something that your pet could eat because my cat eats my Christmas tree, eats the greens. So make sure that when you're bringing something in, it's not something that's going to poison your animals. That would not be a good Christmas present. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, I did use a candle. This uh, Christmas tree here is a candle holder. But if you have these live greens, I do not, I would definitely recommend an LED candle or pretend candle. Do not put a real candle. I, I mean, this seems like a common sense thing, but it, it might seem nice to put your cinnamon scented candle in there. But evergreens are some of the most flammable, flammable items there are. They are full of sap. Um, they are full of, uh, you know, things that are very, sap is so flammable. Um, so please just don't put candles anywhere around your evergreen such pieces. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on from this one. I think it turned out pretty good. So not too bad for a on the spot kind of deciding how to do it. So then I wanted to, I think we'll work on a small one, which I don't know where my small one went. Hold on one second. We might have to take a little intermission. I'll start with this one here. Um, so this is a vase. You can, I wanted to leave it kind of open. Also, I didn't measure very well. Um, but this is just a regular vase, but I wanted it to be a little more festive. Um, and so I covered it in wrapping paper because I'm not actually going to be um, doing water in it. Uh, and so I just kind of did it. If you... <laughs> If this is going to be a centerpiece that is going to be visible from all sides, just don't don't be me, you guys. Make sure you measure your wrapping paper and use something like double stick or something like that. But I wanted to show you guys, you can kind of, you know, take the stuff that you already have. This could be a mason jar. This could be whatever. Um, and you can do that. And if you're going to do something like this tray that I did before, it's already been dismantled and used for parts. Um, but you could set this in this tray like this. I, I, I like a lot of pattern. I know that's not necessarily for everybody. You could easily do brown craft paper or a neutral or a different kind of tray, but I kind of like the, the patterns. Um, so you could kind of set this up and do a tall aspect um, and then fill in around it. Where did, I'm trying to find, we'll work on this one here. Uh, I had a small little gift bag that I set aside that I have now lost because I have Santa's workshop back here and it has blown. Oh, here it is. So I wanted to show, sorry, hi, um, an idea for a small one if you wanted to give a gift or wanted, you had a small area. So I had this little tiny gold bag um, that I thought was really fun. Now it has pink ribbon. You could easily cut that ribbon and put a different one in. You could eliminate the ribbon. I'm just going to leave mine for now because I might add a bow on it later, but mine is gold and it's only gold on the one side. It's just regular. It's not glittery on the other side. So I went through my stash and I found this is a, a liner. I got a orchid or something from uh, Hy-Vee. And so this is just a cheap liner. I put some floral foam in it. Um, and if you aren't familiar with floral foam, this is like a special foam that florists use. They soak it with water and then they poke their stems into it. And they use that and that helps keep things, um, you know, like floral arrangements uh, watered for a long time without having to add water. So I thought though that this could fit really well down inside of this. So this is like, again, just using stuff that I found in my house. This could easily be, um, you know, those uh, plastic, I have one here, just one of like a small version of this that your plants come in when you buy them at the store. It could easily be a small one of these, um, really anything that's gonna fit. It could be a glass, like your juice glasses. You know, we're, you know, 
they're just going to be pine needles in there. Um, I don't think it would ruin anything, but, or a mason jar, but I thought that this could be a fun thing. So then I'm going to cut some greens for this. Um, and I just have regular shears, although they will cut just fine with uh, kitchen scissors, any kind of scissors um, that have a decent blade on them. And I'm just going through and cutting some, a variety of different ones. I'm going to tilt my camera back down again. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do, I liked the mix that I had before with the different textures. Um, so I'm going to cut a big branch and just kind of arrange it. I'm not shoving it into my floral foam just yet because I want, I'm going to put it down in the center. Um, the thing that I love about working with live greens is definitely the smell. You know, that fresh Christmas tree smell. Um, if you do a fake tree, you know, that when I had a fake, my family had a fake tree for years, and that was the number one thing I missed. Um, and so I, we only insist on real trees um, from now on. And when I'm, so really quick about how I'm arranging this. I'm going out wide first, and then I'll come in and fill in on the top. Now, this is a short squat. So I want to go up, but I do want to go out some more. Um, how many varieties of greens would I recommend putting in? If you have one, just do one. No big deal. Um, but if you, I, I like at least two, um, two to three, because it just adds, a, it adds that texture that you're getting. If you don't have more than one kind of green, you maybe uh, think about using like uh, some of this gold, this red tinsel um or something to add a little textural break but you know a, well, i think definitely you want to have um something other than just one kind of green because we don't want it to look like i cut this i cut these greens and shoved them in this bag for you you know you want it to look a little intentional um so definitely if you cut two to three kinds but if you only have access to one just see what else you can find in your house um to kind of put it together Okay, so I think I need a little bit more over here on this side. And I think I want it to be this spruce color kind. I'm sorry, fur. Even Master Gardeners get it wrong. All right, so we've got kind of our greens going. And then, yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more texture. The nice thing about using a gift bag and uh, is that you can, it has these built-in loops and you can loop this and put it over a doorknob. Um, you can use this to hang on a nail, uh, really or your, your wreath hanger, really anything. Um, it's kind of perfect to use a gift bag, but you may, because of, um, that's what, the reason I put an insert inside is so that it has some of that structural integrity to it. Um, I had these weird, these, so these, this is an example of something I should have thrown out. These have been cracked and put aside for years, but I think they'll look kind of nice for, for this. So I'm going to add, um, oh yeah, pine cones too. So, uh, Don, I did not, I, I had trouble getting some pine cones that, that, would fit and could be good sizes, but I have those giant pine cones, but yeah, pine cones are amazing. You can absolutely, um, find any pine cones, uh, and fit those in. Mine were all just too big besides those giant ones that I had. So definitely you can use, uh, change my camera angle here. So, uh, I've got a little bit of everything here. So this is kind of a nice little, you could drop this off at someone's house. You can, I don't actually like this guy in here. He's, he's messing up my mo. He needs to go somewhere else. Um, you can put him out on the front, but, uh, this it's just a kind of nice i mean all of this stuff was free in my house you know this is as long as you don't mind getting if you're giving it away if you don't mind getting rid of it um you know that's just the nice thing about something like this is it's the really it really is the thought that counts in this situation um you don't have to spend a lot of money um and and you can kind of make something that i think a lot of people would see something and go oh i can't i couldn't make that i couldn't um you know, I, I, I don't have the creativity, but I think if you just kind of spend some time um, and putting some things together, I think 
everyone really does. Um, and, and you can just, it just really kind of would be nice. You can set it on, yeah, assess someone say, give it to a coworker. Um, yeah, exactly. Those are the people that really mean a lot to you, but maybe you don't have the extra budget, budget especially this year um, to do that. So this could be a great um, stand on its own. You could also put it in with a, um, if you're gonna do your tray here, you have your tray that you're gonna do, you could put it in as part of your tray and then build around it. Um, so really just about anything could work with something like that. Um, I don't know, I think, I think I have one more that we could try to do. I don't know, Donna, what your timeline is like, but we could try to do, I, I had a couple other pieces that I thought we could maybe talk about. Um, one of them was little mugs. Um, Let's go for it. Go for it. All right. I'm going to see All how right. fast we'll see how fast I can do it. Um, so I, I had these little snowman mugs. I thought that they would be a great vessel, but they could also be um, like maybe if you lined them with plastic, you could give it as a gift with some evergreens in it, make it look a little special. Um, you know, these have been in, around for a while, but you know, you could you could use them as a centerpiece or something like that. This would look great in a kitchen. Um, I have the bottom here of my snowman thing or my, my uh, other, the other lid that I used. And this one is a little bit unique because it's kind of deep. So I, I thought it was interesting because it could look good um, like on your side table or even on your coffee table, but it's so deep that it's really hard to find the stuff that's gonna fit nicely in it. Oh, Dance's workshop is caving in back here. Hold on. I wanted to grab some bags and some filler material. Um, Again, this is just plastic bags from the grocery store or packing material. Everybody, I mean, if you're anything like me, you're ordering lots of things online these days. Um, but I did also have this um, black, this way. This is just one, like I said, a black um, pot, whoa, pot from the nursery where I got plants. Um, and then this is another one of those bags from Amazon. Um, I don't necessarily think you need to cover it too much if it's going to be deep, but I just kind of, you could put it in a gift bag, you could wrap it in wrapping paper. Um, if you just didn't want that black plastic to be visible, uh, I had folded it around the outside, but I think you could honestly just tuck it down in so you can't even see the edges. So it kind of just takes that and makes it a little fancy, you know? make it a little nicer looking. Um, and I'm going to nestle this down in here so you can kind of see if that's helpful to anybody to see kind of where that's at. And then I've got my other material. Okay, so yeah, those gift bags. I have probably 16 zillion because a lot of my family is out of state. So they send my kids things from Amazon. The Amazon gift bags, I have tons of them and I give them away at, you know, to when I send things or when I give them out or whatever. They're amazing. So here's my pot. I'm gonna take my greens for my other stuff just so that you won't have to watch me cutting more of them. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, this is not this is not professional arranging. That was literally just grabbing a fistful and putting it in there. So don't don't be me, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, so I'm just reusing the stuff that I already had. I'm gonna get rid of my this guy here, um, and I have some reds and whites, obviously in this um, container. So I kind of want to work with that theme. Um, I think I'm gonna use my big pine cone again and kind of fill in another, uh, this actually might be too big in this big space. Yeah, it might be. We'll just kind of stick him over here. And then I'm going to look at, I've got these really beautiful, I'm going to work with my red and white uh, organization. I've got some cranberry kind of looking things here. And these are all fairly large items. So I'm going to kind of fill in around it. Sorry, everybody. I didn't have something within arm's reach. I've got this snowflake ribbon. And I don't know if I should keep adding more red and white, but I think I'm gonna go with it. I've got this snowflake ribbon that I'm gonna weave in here. And then I'm gonna take that photo that I had from before. You could also use, I have a, a couple other, I'll grab them while I'm done here. Um, just like vintagey ornaments that you could kinda, these are ones that, you know, they're, they're not necessarily the ones that make the cut on your tree, but 
they, you still have them because you've had them in your family or, you know, something like that. You don't necessarily want to get rid of them, but you, you know, you have them around. Those are the kinds of things that would be great for this. I don't know if you'd want to give it away, but, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice for something. I have a lot of the snowflakes, so I'm just going to shove it down in there so you don't have to worry about them cutting it. So then I'm doing that. If you wanted to add your snowflake lights again, you could. But I'm just going to try to fill it in so that you don't see that um, plastic bags, those, those plastic bags at the bottom. And then honestly, you could take, shove in the rest of my tails here. And I just, the thing I just did right now is I did not um, uh, cut that at all because I want to be able to reuse it in the future. So I just shove the extra down at the bottom. So that way I, I don't, I'm not getting rid of my big, long, um, my big, long length. Um, so then I'm going to take some of my, my evergreens here. I'm going to nestle them in. The thing about stuff like this, it's really easy to go too far in one direction, but if you're not worried about failing, you can't, it's not, it's not a bad SEA. I don't think I want any more evergreens in the front. I think it's distracting from it. So I'm going to grab some of this gold for a little change of pace. I'm going to nestle some gold. Let's see if you can see it there. I grabbed, I had some gold in another one. I wanted a little con textural contrast and I wanted a little color contrast. So I grabbed that. I'm going to nestle one in right here with the evergreens. And right over here. All right. So it went together pretty fast. Um, I got some of my nostalgic stuff. I got um, some textural changes. I've got these soft kind of cotton ball-y items. I've got my pine cone, the evergreens, and they'll smell really nice. And then we've got our glitter elements in there as well. And then I just kind of filled in all the edges with this um, snowflake ribbon. So yeah, it's got some maybe maybe too much pattern for some folks. You know, I no judgment here. I definitely, like I said, I'm fully card carrying member of the More Is More Club. So um, definitely do whatever your taste level is like. But I also, you may notice, I'm gonna change my camera angle. Um, you may notice I do a lot with uh, asymmetry. I'm not super worried. You could also set your, your um, pine, your evergreens up in the direct center and arrange everything kind of around it. That's definitely not my, my that's not my um, instinct, but it's that, I think it looks great when other people do it. This is just how I like to do it. You definitely could set it, you know, your evergreens in the center and then arrange things around the outside. And that would look, that would look great as well. Um, the nice thing about this size height, you'll notice I didn't do too much too hot, tall, is you can set, set it in the coffee table center. You could also set it in the center of your um, dining room, but I'm gonna tilt this down just a little bit. But the only thing I would say is when it's on your dining room table, you might want some stuff around the base here. And that could be more greens, kind of like this, um, or that could be garland, tinsel, something like that. Something around the base to kind of make it feel a little bit more put together once it's down, especially in the center of um, like your dining room table when you've got like a bigger area kind of spread out. So I think that's all I have. Does anyone have questions? I know we've been asking questions kind of along the way. Um, yeah, fireplace hearth would be a good idea, Kayleen. Um, I'm going to go, oh, near the front door, outside on the front porch. Absolutely. So when you're talking about front porch or outside, I didn't really talk about that, but um, you could absolutely, if everything is weather, you know, what if it's maybe on a front porch that's protected, my front porch is kind of protected, but it still could get wet. But if you have something you don't really care about or it's recycled or something like that, or you have literally used a gift bag around a planter, that's that's easy to just toss at the end of the year or not not worry about um so yeah just make sure that all your stuff that that's probably the best place for your your evergreens um and and then the best place you know to keep them fresh and lasting a long time um okay i'm going to see if there's any other questions here i have a question for you yes Natalie. yes what should be the tallest um dimension for the centerpiece when it's on the dining room table 
Well, you want to think about, well, it's a little, it's a little different this year if you're not having dinner parties, but some of us might probably having small gatherings in our bubble or whatever. Um, you want it to be so that people don't have to lean around it for conversation height. So if we're thinking this one right here, you know, I've got, I'm going to hold it up here. So this is sitting on my dining room table here. I would say this is 10 inches tall, maybe. Um, I don't think you would want a ton taller than that. You want it to be conversation height. So when you're comfortably sitting at the table, you can have a conversation with someone across the table. So depending on who you are, if you have a short torso like me, I'm probably no more than 18 inches tall. Um, but if you're, you know, a taller person or have a, a bunch of tall people, it could be a little taller, but you also want to think about how that's going to look. If you would do have the, like a lot of people with their Thanksgiving tables or things like that, you have lots of food and you want the centerpiece to kind of stand out from it. Um, so I would say max would be 10 to 12 inches high is how tall you would want it just for comfortable conversation. So someone's not craning up over the top, you know, things like that. We have two people on who mentioned possibly having it at the end of the table, the centerpiece mm -hmm. at the end, and then they could use something taller. 100%. Yeah. You do you as far as like what works for your table and what works for your aesthetic. Um, absolutely. If you have, especially like I'm sitting at the head of my table and if you wanted it here where everyone could look down towards it, maybe you're, all your food is down at this end, it would look really nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, everybody is commenting about how we should reuse and recycle so much of it. And that's what makes this so exciting. Also, um, you know, while some of us aren't having a lot of people mm -hmm. over this year, we don't want to give away these ideas, uh, you know, too far out of our memory because next yeah. year we'll be able to use them again. So let's Absolutely. keep them all. I wanted to just mention your idea about doing the still photos of the mm -hmm. centerpieces. Mm -hmm. If you could do that and send them to us, we'll put them into a PDF with a link yeah. and we'll put it on the website along with the recording of this program tonight so that um, people can refer to them because it does get a little pixelated when we're moving, yeah. around, moving the camera. But, you know, we got the idea. Everybody here understands how that goes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can put together, I'll, I'll just send pictures. Now, some of them have now been cannibalized. So I'll make some up and send a pictures right. to, to you, Donna. But I've got a couple that'll still, I took some pictures before we got going. So we should be good to go. I think that's great. I, I, I also liked your idea, um, in addition to the uh, kind of vintage photo. I think that, you know, if you were doing something where you were Zooming your dinner, with mm -hmm. uh, grandma and grandpa or something like yeah. that. Maybe the centerpiece could even include something that your daughter, for example, could make for grandma to show it. Definitely, yeah. That and um, the nice thing about something like this too, um, yeah, you could, or you could have everybody make their own at their house. Um, and then kind of hold it up and talk about why they made their centerpiece the way they did or what they used for it or things like that. That would be a really fun idea. But yeah, having handmade items, especially for like a grandparent would be awesome. That would be. That's really great. Um, we will put the warning on the website again to remind people about the plant safety when it comes to pets and little children, mm -hmm. toddlers especially. And also for um, no real candles. No real candles, please. <laughs> I watched Natalie Martin's program and she used a candle holder and I thought it was a great idea and I lit mine on fire. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, any, anything else from our audience? Any other questions for Natalie? We'd love to hear more Thanks. from you. This is, this has gone very well Okay. Uh, in terms of our audience interaction. This is yeah, it was it was really easy to when people ask questions. It was easy for me to see because I wasn't presenting. So that was great. Everyone did awesome asking questions. I was thankful. Uh, yeah, the pillar candles, sorry, Kaylee, pillar candles with the batteries is perfect. Exactly. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's great. And I know that we all have ribbon in our house that's either leftover or, you know, I I always buy extra because I don't know how to shop any other way for ribbon. I evidently am also one of those people that saves every ribbon that everyone sure. gives me for the rest of my life, it turns yes. out. So um, I have a lot of ribbon in my house. That gold ribbon was evidently from somebody. So um, it's, yeah, I think if you're one of those people that hangs on to stuff because it seems awful to throw it away, this is the perfect project for you. 
And also with the wrapping paper idea around the vase or even a, a garden pot that came from the garden center. You could use a can, like a soup can even, you know, you can just put wrapping paper around a soup can because those would be watertight too. You could do that for any type of wrapping paper all year round. You know, you could easily wrap it around a soup can and use it for flowers or just to put pencils in or anything. So, right. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. I, I'm, I'm getting new ideas of uh, wrapping something up in, in wrapping paper, you know, some kind of a container. Everyone's and getting then, garbage for Christmas. Sorry, right. everybody. And making, <laughs> making gift cards out of the matching wrapping paper. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. Okay, so we have, we have some more comments yeah. coming your way, Natalie. It's a good for kids to do and learn about mm -hmm. greens, crafts, and without spending any money. Yeah. Like I said, my daughter Ruby made that one. We were just making them this afternoon to put some together. Um, and she loved, she loved doing it. She, um, like I said, it was a definite more is more. Let's put all the big things. Uh, she also decorates the tree that way. Let's put all the big things together. Um, and again, but as long as you kind of just let them have it, you know, and they're not breaking anything, go for it. Yeah. Did you check that last comment out in the uh, chat box? Did you make one? A kitchen platter, a red mug, a drinking glass. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Great. I'm glad. I wasn't sure if people were going to make them along with me, but it's kind of hard when everyone doesn't have the same materials. But at least if we're making them, we can kind of see um, what some ideas might be. And uh, it's, it's awesome. Awesome job, Cindy. Thank you for participating. We're typing here right now uh, to, to get a photo from you and we will put it on the website. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice tonight. It's, it's dry out here in the world, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody, you know, wants to send Donna, you know, send your pictures to Donna. If you do make some, that would be amazing. Um, we can try to do one similar if we want in the spring, maybe, or even summer when we have cut flowers that we can use, we can try to do something like that. Um, that would be so we'll fun. just, we'll, uh, we'll work on that and, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon, everyone. Okay, and uh, Natalie, you have a wonderful holiday. Yes, you guys too. It's even more fun. <laughs> All right, I hope everyone gets garbage for Christmas. Have a good okay. rest of your night. <laughs> All right, bye. Thanks so much. Good bye. night.